Well, folks, welcome to Coffee with Job, and we are back in my office at ENC for the AS project. It's chucking it down rain, so I can't go outside again, and we are coming to Job chapter 42. And we're going to think about a really interesting passage about praying for friends. Let me just read it. Job 42, if you've got a Bible, Job 42, and we're going to look at verses 8 to 9. So now take, so, well, sorry, well, I better read from verse 7. After the Lord had said these things to Job, he said to Eliphaz the Temanite, I'm angry with you and your two friends because you have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. So now take seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and sacrifice a burnt offering for yourselves. My servant Job will pray for you and I will accept his prayer and not deal with you according to your folly. You have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite and Zophar the Namathite did what the Lord told them and the Lord accepted Job's prayer. Now, what's fascinating about this is Job's friends would have thought that they were the intercessors. They were the ones who were coming to help Job. And it turns out that they were the ones who needed intercession. They were the ones who needed Job to pray for them. You have not spoken of me what is right. They were the fools. I won't listen to you, says God, but I will listen to Job because he prays for you. They had felt so superior to him and so knowledgeable about God. Well, what did they say that was wrong? Here's a, here's a thought for you. They always speak of God in the third person. Job addressed God personally. And, you know, sometimes in our prayers, our prayers are about God, not to God. And now Job has to pray for them if they are to be forgiven. I think there's a little bit of an echo of Jesus in this. And what I mean by that is the suffering servant who intercedes for his people. I think it's wonderful that Job prayed for his friends who so annoyed him. I mean, just think about the people you pray for. It would be nice if you prayed for me. Um, I try. Some of you I know. A lot of you I don't know, of course. I don't know who's watching this, but some of you I do know. And yeah, I pray but I wonder about praying for enemies. I think that is, uh, that's quite important. Praying for people who upset you, praying for people who annoy you. Is that not the real test of suffering, that it makes us more Christ-like and more forgiving? You know, we do live in this strange world where people don't forgive anything. And of all people, Christians should be the ones who, who know how to forgive. I remember one time somebody spoke to me and they said they were just utterly amazed that I was speaking to them. And I said, why? And they said, well, you're so forgiving. Well, I wasn't really forgiving, actually, to be honest. I'd forgotten what they'd done. They, they had to remind me that they'd done something. And I think maybe, that, maybe that's a good way to be. I don't know. People, can you think of someone just now who's really hurt you, who's really wounded you? Do you pray for them? And I don't mean in the kind of Lord smite the Amalekites type prayer. I mean pray for their well-being. Now, these men, the three friends, Eliphaz, Bildad and Zophar, not only did they have to have Job pray for them, but they had to offer a sacrifice, a burnt offering. And it was very expensive. Seven bulls and seven rams. Only the very wealthy could afford such a sacrifice. And in that sacrifice, the hands were laid on the animal, identifying the victim with the worshipper. And all in there, there was representation, there was substitution, it was all going up in smoke, God's anger against sin. Now, what that does is show the seriousness of the sin they had committed in not speaking rightly about God. I think uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 21, Jesus says this. Let me just make sure I quote it to you accurately. Because I'm, I'm afraid I often quote scripture off the top of my head and 
you know, we, we, we do sometimes get things wrong. You've heard it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder. And anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who's angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Well, they were angry with Job. They called him a fool. They had a real go at him, didn't they? So, there we are. We can pray for our friends. Whoa, one other thought on that. The four men who took their friend and lowered him through the roof to Jesus. Isn't it interesting? When Jesus saw their faith, he said to him, Son, your sins are forgiven. And the you there is singular. We can take our friends to Jesus. We can take our enemies to Jesus and uh, intercede. The Lord calls us to be interceders. I hope you're an interceder. I hope if you're a Christian that you pray regularly, not just for your own, but for other people's benefit. All right. We shall see you tomorrow. Bye.